Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's live academic IELTS class for reading. My name is Adrian, and I am broadcasting this session to you live from beautiful Budapest, Central Europe, capital city of Hungary. And as usual, our materials come from our websites, including this reading from aehelp.com. That's academicenglishhelp.com, where we can help you get your high IELTS band score, as well as help you with uh, academic CVs, statement of purpose. So make sure to check out our website. Uh, hi, Aigul. Good to see members in on time. Hi, Nair. Hi, Iman. Hi, Amy. Hi, Harminder. Another member. Fantastic. Hi, Sarisha. Good to see you in class. All right. If you're looking for general IELTS, do check us out at gieltshelp.com. That's general ieltshelp.com for our general IELTS materials. You can find our app in your iTunes or Play Store. Search for Academic IELTS Help. You'll find our logo. Download the app. You can also get our books in hard copy from Amazon. Search for AE Helps Academic IELTS. Uh, if you have questions, comments, concerns, email me, adrian at aehelp.com. That's my email address. Uh, our live IELTS streaming, uh, I announce it at the beginning of class. You can also see it on our community board in YouTube. Uh, it's Central European Time, CET, and it's 15 to 16 o'clock, uh, Wednesday to Saturday. So today we're doing reading strategy practice, tomorrow listening strategy and practice, and then on the 16th Saturday we will do a members chat. That's one of the perks and benefits of being a member is you get access to your exams, you get to request classes, your name appears in green, it's easier for me to see your comments. All right, and thank you members for your support, by the way, you're awesome. Uh, okay, students, so let's uh, jump right over to our reading passage of the day. This is from our second test, it's passage number two, and uh, imagine that you've opened up this part of your IELTS exam. Hi, Rekha. Hi, Maninder Jeet. Hi, Preeti. Uh, what do you need to do? So you're opening up. Now, of course, we have a very pretty, colorful picture for you here, but uh, in your official IELTS, this will be black and white. So uh, what should you do? What's your first step? Hi, Jubilant. Good to see you in class. Hi, Sakshi. Oh, by the way, uh, I usually don't do this because it's kind of weird, but hey, a big heart goes out to everybody for Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Um, <laughs> there's my heart, my pumping heart. Um, all right, so uh, back on track here, back on track. Uh, you're in your IELTS reading. You uh, look at uh, this picture. You see this title. What do you do? Ah, Rekha says visualize. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, students, uh, especially for passages where you see some kind of a picture, uh, you have to visualize, okay? The picture is right away a tip from the IELTS that this reading passage is especially good for visualizing. So remember this important tip for the reading section, okay? And these kinds of passages are good ones to start with because they can be easier. Uh, thank you for the Valentine's Day wishes, everyone. I appreciate that, the hearts. They make me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Okay, so tip, uh, when you see a picture with the title of the IELTS reading passage, this is a hint that you should visualize because the topic is very visual, concrete, and visual. Keep this in mind. These are good passages to start with. Okay? So even though we're looking at a uh, passage two, uh, if I'm uh, in the reading section of the IELTS and I'm looking at passage one, two, and three, and I notice that passage two has this beautiful picture 
of a tiger, I might start with this one just because visual information that we can clearly see is usually easier than not. Um, for example, in one of the recent IELTS exams, there was uh, a reading passage in the academic about the differences between learning among men versus learning among women. Uh, and that's not a visual uh, topic. So uh, sociology, psychology, education, history, sometimes, uh, but uh, political science and uh, these social sciences are not physical topics. So those passages are often more difficult uh, because of the information, not just the language, as it is in your own uh, language also. So when you see physical tangibles, it, those are better ones to start with. So here, we visualize tigers. Uh, what do you see when you visualize a tiger? Other than seeing this beautiful creature, uh, what do you actually see? So what do you see when you visualize tigers? Okay, that's a really good question here. So hopefully you see that big, beautiful beast, orange with its black stripes, white. Uh, what else? So Jubilant sees the canine teeth, those are the big fangs, yeah, the stripes. Sami sees the royal Bengal tiger of Bangladesh. Uh, somebody with a Cyrillic name after Sami, I'm sorry, I can't read your name, but... Uh, uh, dying out species. So what do you actually see? You maybe see people hunting them. Yeah. Uh, Preeti sees that it's a dangerous animal and it's hunting uh, a human being. Okay. Uh, Mohit says he sees a powerful animal. So you see that it's large. Uh, it's master of the jungle. Okay. So um, So, for example, I see a group of humans hunting the tigers for their beautiful fur. Absolutely. Uh, maybe some of you are also visualizing a white tiger in a circus. Okay. Uh, definitely, I bet a lot of you have seen that. All right. So, absolutely. Okay. Uh, see as much as possible as much as possible. The more you see, the easier it will be for you to understand uh, what you read, all right? So collect as much information, get as many neurons and cells as possible firing uh, in your brain that are connected to tigers as possible that you've seen and learned about in your life, all right? That's great, fantastic, okay? So that's what you should see, okay? Uh, then what do you do? So sure, your first step is you visualize, you see the tiger, you see that it's being hunted, you see the tiger hunting, you see the white tiger, you see the orange, the Bengal tiger. Uh, what else? You see the prey predator. What else do you need to do now? So what, sh what more should you do? Okay. And some of you are probably thinking... Read the title and use some critical thinking, okay? So Sevgi says, read the title, check the question. Sevgi, you're pretty, pretty close to what I would be doing here, absolutely. So read and, okay, this is an important strategy here. So don't just read the title. Read and interpret the title, Ask what, why, how. Right, so here, animals of different stripes. Okay, that's the title. Animals of different stripes. Why is that the title? 
Why do you think this is called animals of different stripes? Can you guess? So if you read animals of different stripes, can you guess what that is? Maybe not. Okay, maybe you can't. It's a little bit tricky because it's a clever, creative title. So then you can take another step, okay? Here it is. So this is a tip. If you cannot get the title right away, read the first two lines and try again. Okay, this will work for a lot of different passages in your academic aisles. So here we go. Animals of different stripes. Let's uh, zoom in here, take a closer look. So the Siberian and Bengal tigers are two of the most well-known types of tigers. These tigers are very similar. In fact, come from the same species, but they do have some important differences. So here are my first two lines. Stop, okay? Don't keep reading. Think. Think a little bit at this point, all right? So now, the same question. Why is the title of this reading passage Animals of Different Stripes? And there we go, Mohit, right away, of course. You're like, well, it's because we're dealing with types of tigers. Sevgi saying introducing species of tiger or subspecies of tigers, right, Sevgi? Subspecies of tigers, all right? All right. Um, and uh, that's what you're going to read about. Yeah, absolutely. So now you're thinking, okay, well, what's different among them? So here the example is uh, animals of different stripes. Okay, after reading those two sentences, again, remember, so read the title. If the title doesn't make sense, read the first two sentences, then come back and do your critical thinking. So stop and think. So animals of different stripes, uh, comparing to subspecies of tiger, uh, Siberian and Bengal, sure. All right, uh, and then uh, I can see a lot of you now, your wheels are turning, your cogs of your brain are turning. Cogs are those uh, uh, wheels with the little teeth on them that you see in a watch, like a wristwatch or a clock, okay? So the cogs, the cogs of your brain are turning. You're thinking, okay, well, what is a Siberian tiger? What is a Bengal tiger? Why are we talking about them? How are they different? And I can see that some of you are already answering these questions. Anish Aptish says uh, geographical differences. Clearly, one lives in Siberia, the other in parts of India, uh, Bhutan, Nepal. Uh, Begzad says, well, their fur is probably different. Their habits, habitats can be different. So now you're thinking about all of that information, right? So uh, what differences in habits, appearance, Geography, habitat, it's kind of the same as geography. So you're getting all that information. Fantastic, good, smart. And you're doing this fast, okay? You train yourself before the IELTS to think this way, to think quickly. You see the picture, you visualize, you read the title, you start thinking what, why, how. You don't understand the title, no problem. You read the first two sentences, you try again. Now you have great prediction you're able to forecast or foretell what the information will be in the passage. Your comprehension just went up by 50%, okay? Your score for answering the questions will also go up by 20, 30% for sure. It's not a question of maybe, it's definitely, okay? It's logic, all right? That's how it works. Characteristics, absolutely, Manindrajit, all right? So now you look at those questions. So let's have a look at the questions. Okay. 
First one is a classification style question. So here it's saying classify the following facts as applying to A, Bengal tigers, or B, Siberian tigers. Okay, write the correct letter A or B in boxes 14 to 18, so five points here. Do I read this type of question before reading the passage? So should I read this? Now, of course, here you're probably asking yourself correctly, is this information in the passage? Yes, it is. Begzod, absolutely. Okay. Uh, Harish, uh, it's adrian at aehelp.com and gileshelp.com is where we have the general IELTS training. Okay, Harish, send me an email. Uh, yeah, okay, Preeti, Aman, yes, yes, Manindraji, yes, we read this, absolutely. All of this information is somewhere in the passage, so we read it. Lives further from the equator. Has a significantly higher population. Exhibits large size fluctuations depending on geography. Grows no additional fur during different seasons. Lives in a climate with large temperature fluctuations. So we have one, two, three, four, five questions here. From these five questions, I can answer three of them without reading. Which ones? There's a funky question for you, an interesting inquiry. Which three of these five can I actually answer right now without any reading, just by using my critical thinking and logic? Which three? I am 100% sure that I can give you correct answers to three of these questions. Okay, so 14, I agree. Yep, absolutely, I can answer 14. So 14 I could confidently answer. 15, no. 14, Ashish, 17, yep. I can answer that one. And Maninderjeet, 18. Yeah, absolutely. So these three questions, I can answer just by logic. Uh, 15, I have to be careful about. I might know from my own knowledge, but I'd want to be very careful with 15. As a significantly higher population, I'm not sure about that one. Uh, what's the answer for number 14? Lives further from the equator. Okay, so let's just go one at a time. Uh, equator, for those of you who are not familiar with the word, this is planet Earth, okay? That line that separates planet Earth in the middle is called the equator. Coming from the word equal, the country in Central America that is close to the equator is called Ecuador, okay? Yeah, and a lot of you are saying, well, the Siberian tiger, because Russia is up here, right? So if we're looking at the world like this, here's Africa, let's say Europe. Um, okay, here's India. Okay, Australia, uh, South America, North America. Okay, I'll draw you the world. Uh, so here's the equator, okay? India is pretty much on the equator. Uh, Nepal is close, so we know Bengal tigers are close. Siberia is up here, right? So clearly Siberia is much further from the equator than India or Nepal. So we know that this is 90, 99.99999% sure that it is going to be Siberian tigers because they live further from the equator, right? All right. So there you go. Uh, we know that that's B. Uh, number 17, grows no additional fur during different seasons. Again, logic will help me with this one. What do you think is the answer for 17? Again, I want to show you that in academic reading, you can actually get about 30% of the answers, sometimes even more, without even reading, just by using good logic. Okay. So Bibas says, and Aksa for 17, they all say A, right? Um, Begzod agrees that it should be A for number 17. 
Right, so there's no, it's an important word, additional fur. Uh, so we believe that that's going to be the Bengal tiger. Why? Why is it A? Why, why, would, why would 17 be A? Okay, so here we're just using logic. Don't worry, we will read. Yeah, so Anish Aptish says, well, Siberia, way up here in the north, gets very cold. Absolutely, it is one of the coldest places on earth. So we can imagine that in Siberia, the tiger will grow fur, especially in the winter, to keep it warm. Now, if we think about it from the other direction, Bengal tigers that live around India, uh, Nepal, Bhutan, uh, they live around warmer climates. They don't need extra fur, right? So uh, they live in a climate that is warm all year. It's a stable, warm climate. You don't need a lot of fur there. So A makes sense. It's logic, okay? Uh, number 18, what's the correct answer there? Number 18. That's the last one that logic can help us with. So Khadija Bo, thank you for spelling it out. You said Siberian tiger needs extra fur for the cold winter climate. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. A. And many of our students live around uh, the Indian subcontinent region, so they know that there's not a lot of temperature fluctuation there. There can be some, especially in the desert region between nighttime, daytime, absolutely, but not the same as Siberia, okay? Siberia, we can imagine, will get quite a bit warmer in the summer and very cold in the winter. So we can guess that it is, again, A, okay? And these two make sense, okay? So large temperature fluctuations, that means from plus 30 degrees Celsius to uh, maybe minus 30 or 40 degrees Celsius, right? So that's a huge fluctuation. It's a 70 degrees Celsius fluctuation. Uh, so it makes sense that it's uh, growing no addition, oh, sorry, that's B. <laughs> I hope somebody's correcting me on that. <laughs> For 18, it's B. Okay, lives in climate with large fluctuations. So Siberian tigers live in temperatures. So careful, double check your answers. Um, so it makes sense that this tiger, because it lives in a place where the temperatures are similar, does not need uh, additional fur. And this one does. Okay, so... These three answers, I hope I didn't confuse anybody too much there. Uh, these three answers are logical, okay? So 14B, 17A, 18B, you should be able to figure out just from your own knowledge and your own logic, okay? All right. So again, B, A, B, just to be clear on that. A little bit of a mental slip on my end there with the A. Okay, uh, so uh, now let's make a note on this and then we'll read and we'll look at the other questions here in just a second. Give me a moment. Here we go. So we read these ones, it's fine. Uh, questions 19 to 23, yes, no, not given. Uh, should I read these before the passage? Yes, no, not given. Do I read these ones? Is it a good idea? Or not? What should I do? Read or not read before the passage? No, absolutely not. Uh, the answers will likely be for some of them no and not given. So those are confusing. Don't read them before the passage. Doesn't make sense. Okay, here we have 24, 25, 26. Uh, these are... Uh, Fill in the blanks or complete the sentence type questions. Uh, should I read this one? Yeah, okay, good. Some of you are saying, yeah, read that one. Sure, so humans are not a part of the tiger's regular 
something. While not common, the Bengal tiger will resort to if they are unable to process the flesh of other uh, animals. Okay. Uh, attacks by Bengals are often committed in defense of the tiger's something. Okay, uh, let's do a little guessing game. So again, let's try to use our logic. Humans are not a part of the tiger's regular what? What do you think that is? If you had to guess, if I said you can win a million dollars if you guess that correctly, uh, what do you think that is? Aska says diet. Amarwadi says diet. Yeah, I would say diet. Okay, that would be my best guess. If I'm running out of time, and I don't have enough uh, time left to read this passage properly or answer these questions, I might guess diet, okay? Uh, food is okay, but diet is the better word, okay? Diet is the better word. Uh, while not common, the Bengals tiger will resort to something humans especially if they're unable to process the flesh of other animals. If you had to guess, what would you guess? So while not common, the Bengal tiger will resort to hunting. So the, the, the word would be hunting. Uh, hunting humans is okay. Killing humans is okay. Uh, what would be even better than hunting or killing? What's, what's better than hunting or killing? Not attacking. Animals, uh, animals, believe it or not, are uh, not so vicious that they just hunt and kill. They have a purpose. What is the purpose? Yvonne, the first one. Yvonne says, uh, eating, right? Yeah. Yeah, animals usually take action because they have a purpose. That purpose is eating, right? So use your logic. Eating is better than hunting or killing what's the end goal so think about what is the end goal right always keep that in mind you'll get a better answer especially if they're unable to process the flesh of other animals that also tells me that this is a better answer attacks by bangles are often committed in defense of the tigers what what do you think is Yeah, you belong. Good. You made a mental note of that. Yeah, that was an important tip. Uh, clashing zone says family or children. Okay. Uh, in English, humans have children. Okay. For animals, we call them different. Okay. What do we call them? Pretty good vocabulary. Good for you. Okay. Cubs. So tigers have cubs. What other animals have cubs? Let's see how good your English vocab is. Just a bonus question. Tigers have cubs. What other animals have cubs? Lions have cubs. That's right. Bears have cubs. Very good. Bears have cubs. Lions have cubs. And another animal that's common in Siberia and Russia and Canada as well. What else has cubs? Bear, lion, so far so good. There's one other common animal that we say has cubs. I'll give you a hint. It's not a dog. Dogs have puppies. That's right, Ishmael. Very good for you. Okay? It's a wolf. wolf. Wolves have cubs. So dogs have puppies. Wolves have cubs. That's right. Okay, very good. All right, students. So uh, let's read now together, and uh, then we will answer these questions. Before we do that, I just want to remind you of this very important tip that I gave you. I'll just make a note of that for you so you keep it in mind. The big tip, okay? So logic, using Good logic, deductive reasoning can solve about 
of the questions, sometimes more. in the reading section okay so logic is your friend big letters logic is your friend okay keep that in mind see one of your most unique and powerful human abilities you don't have big teeth canines like the tiger you don't have huge claws like the tiger but you have a brain that is more powerful than any other processing machine in the natural world and that will give you an advantage so use it in IELTS logic is your friend okay all right students uh, so I'm going to uh, play the audio from our website uh, the audio for this for those of you who have it it's CD2 track 6 okay uh, one of the special features on our websites is we include audio for all of the reading sections as well it helps you to learn you don't have that in the real IELTS but it ha it's helpful for for learning so use it in your full course okay so uh, and you'll hear somebody else's voice not just mine this is our academic IELTS website click that big red button to join it when you do you have a my student account when you jump into your my student account by the way this works on your phone or your tablet as well it's responsive uh, then uh, you can go to your audio CDs tab and here we are going to CD number uh, two, track number six. So I'm going to play this, read with the person. Remember to visualize, okay students? This is a visual topic, so try to see the information that you're reading. Okay, here we go. The Siberian and Bengal Tigers. The Siberian and Bengal tigers are two of the most well-known types of tigers. These tigers are very similar. In fact, they come from the same species, but they do have some important differences. These similarities and differences, while interesting to note, are vital pieces of information for the people in charge of the conservation of endangered species of tigers. Wildlife conservationists have to tell the difference between the two in order to keep accurate accounts of the respective populations. The first main difference between the two tigers is the location of their habitats. The Siberian tiger today lives only in the far northeast part of Russia called Siberia, although it used to live as far west as Western Asia and as far east as parts of Alaska. One of the main reasons Siberian tigers do not live in China anymore is due to widespread illegal hunting there in the past. Bengal tigers live in a warmer, more southern climate. They reside mostly in India, but also in Bangladesh, Nepal and Bhutan. Bengal tigers are the most numerous of all tigers, with approximately 1,800 living in the wild worldwide. Siberian tigers, conversely, number only about two to three hundred in their natural habitats. Both tigers are extremely popular zoo exhibits, which further contributes to the low numbers of both, especially the Siberian tiger. There have been efforts to breed Siberian tigers in captivity, and many of these efforts have been successful. However, the offspring are unfit to live in the wild. At the very least, these efforts allow zoos to maintain their exhibits without taking even more tigers out of the wild population. Siberian tigers on average are larger than Bengals. The average weight of a Bengal male is about 220 kilograms, while the weight of a Siberian averages slightly heavier. Amazingly, Siberian tigers can be as large as 320 kilograms. The lengths of these animals are also different. On average, male Siberian tigers have a nose to tail length of three meters, while the Bengal's length is slightly shorter. Their tail lengths, interestingly, are the same, averaging around one meter. One notable observation is that the farther north in the Bengal tiger's habitat, the larger the animals get. 
The average weight of a tiger in northern India is about 15 kilograms more than ones in southern India, where the average recorded weight is 220 kilograms. Another clear difference between the two tigers is the seasonal growth of a winter coat for the Siberian tiger. Since they live in northern Russia, which is an unforgiving climate in the winter, the ability to endure temperatures well below freezing is essential for survival. Unlike the Bengal tiger, which lives in more equatorial climates around India, where the temperatures are more or less the same year round, the Siberian lives in a climate where the temperature can vary more than 50 degrees Celsius. Because of this, Siberians grow longer fur in the winter. For example, the fur on the Siberian's back in the summer measures about 16 millimetres, while in winter this length almost triples. The Bengal tiger has no need for such a long winter coat. The two tigers share many similarities, including diet and reproduction. Being carnivorous, other animals are the food supply for both. The types of animals hunted are various due to the different regions that are home to these tigers. Bengals eat animals such as wild boar, water buffalo and chital, while Siberian tigers eat primarily wild boar, deer and moose. Bengals and Siberians have very similar reproductive cycles. Both tigers reach maturity around four years of age, at which time they begin their mating rituals. The females are pregnant for about 15 weeks and give birth to between one and four cubs. Each of these cubs weighs about a kilogram and will be entirely dependent on their mother for the first six months of life. After that time, they begin their learning process where they develop the skills they need to hunt and kill for survival. After two or three years, the cubs are ready to leave their mother and hunt independently. And at the age of four or five, they reach sexual maturity and so the cycle continues. One last difference between the two tigers is a significant one, especially for humans. Neither tiger hunts humans as part of their normal diet, but one of the two tigers is known to be a man-eater. The Bengal tiger, under the right circumstances, will eat humans. Bengals will attack humans in two cases. First, they will attack humans who interfere with the Bengals hunting or feeding. Bengal mothers do not take kindly to people when they are feeding their cubs. Also, older Bengals will kill humans for food because humans are easy to eat, unlike wild boar, for example. Human skin is soft and fleshy, perfect for an old tiger with weak muscles and worn down teeth. Siberians, however, will generally not attack humans unless they feel threatened. As such, records show that Bengal attacks are far more common than Siberian attacks. All right, so that speed of reading, it's absolutely enough for the aisles. You can, in fact, read a little bit slower. Uh, this type of text can be fairly tricky to scan or search information for just because of the magazine style uh, layout as well. So it's best to answer as many questions as you can, students, without looking back at the text. Okay, for this kind of a visual uh, information, you should be able to answer 80% of the questions, if not all, without having to read again. So let's do that. Okay, classify the following facts as applying to either A, Bengal tigers, or B, Siberian tigers. Write the correct letter A or B in boxes 14 to 18. Lives further from the equator. We discussed this. It becomes clear in the reading that it's definitely B Siberian tigers, okay? So B for that one. Be careful here with the B and the B for Bengal. It's not, don't confuse those. It's an easy mental confusion. So B here is Siberian tiger, okay? So lives further from the equator, Siberian tiger, B. 
has a significantly higher population. Number 15. What is that? So what is number 15? Okay. Love Preet Singh and uh, person with the Cyrillic before that. Both are saying A, Bengal Tigers. Yeah. Uh, bonus question. How many more Bengal Tigers are there in the wild than Siberians? Let's see how accurate some of you are able to read, how good your uh, comprehension and your short-term memory is for your reading. How many more Bengal tigers are there? This is a math question. The correct answer to my question here would be somebody saying six times more. So six times more Bengal tigers than Siberian tigers, right? So Jubilon, thank you, five to six times more. Okay, careful, make sure you answer my question, not, I wasn't asking for total numbers, I was asking for how many times more uh, Bengal tigers are there than Siberian. So if there's about two to 300 Siberian tigers in the wild, and there's roughly 1,800 Bengals, it's about six times the population, roughly. Okay, number 16, exhibits large size fluctuations depending on geography. Number 16, what is the correct answer? Mahesh says B, Spider Ninja says B, Asuka says B. Okay, Sami says B, Vivek says A. Good for you, Vivek. Okay, Pachu says A, good for you, Pachu. Mekria says, hey, good for you, Mekria. Yeah, anybody remember why? Here we go. One notable observation is that the further north in the Bengal tiger's habitat, the larger the animals get. The average weight of a tiger in northern India is about 15 kilograms more than ones in southern India. So for those of you who live in northern India, your Bengal tigers are bigger than your friends who live in southern India, okay? So there's large size fluctuations, roughly 8% difference, okay? So that's where that answer is coming from, all right? Uh, depending on geography. Geography here, it's descriptive paraphrasing, it's North India versus South India, okay? So number 16 is Bengal tiger, which is A, okay? Uh, number 17, grows no additional fur during different seasons. We talked about that. Again, that's the Bengal tiger. And the last one, we talked about that as well, using logic, lives in a climate with large temperature fluctuations. That's B, Anybody remember how big the uh, temperature fluctuations are for 18? So for 18, we remember that it's the Siberian. And I said about 70 degrees Celsius. The uh, passage disagrees with me. They give a different number. What was the uh, temperature variance? Ishmael says 50, 50 degrees I believe 50 is correct. Let me double check that, but that's what I remember as well. Uh, so, here we go. Da, da, da. Yeah, there it is. So they, you're searching for the number. So in a climate where the temperature can vary, vary means fluctuate. It's a good word to know for IELTS task one. Variation, fluctuation, the data shows variation, the data show fluctuation. Uh, 50 degrees Celsius, so good. All right, great. Um, notice an interesting technique that I'm using right now for improving your reading. What I'm doing is I'm asking follow-up questions and that's a fantastic practice strategy before you sit IELTS is do follow-up questions for the questions, okay? I challenge you to practice this at home. Uh, you will notice that your reading comprehension and your score goes up, and you might even enjoy it, believe it or not, okay? So it's kind of a funky little 
uh, exercise or technique that I'm showing you at this moment, okay? So it's a practice strategy before sitting out. Okay, and the reason for it is to improve your comprehension. And the trick here is just simply ask follow-up questions to the questions in the reading. And the example here is uh, question number 18. Sorry, was that number? Yeah, number 18. Lives lives in areas with large temperature uh, fluctuations. Okay. The follow-up question is how much does the temperature vary? And the answer is uh, 50 degrees Celsius, okay? So practice that at home. That will work well. Spider Ninja, thank you so much uh, for your Super Chat donation. I appreciate that. You're awesome. Good for you. Thank you for supporting us. It's people like you that make this possible, and that's not a word of a lie. So really thanks. Um, all right. Let's get back to it. Uh, here we go with the yes, no, not given. Okay, yes, no, not given. Uh, let's talk about these. Remember strategies from uh, past classes. First, you have to identify whether or not the statement is important for the passage. If it is, it has to be yes or no. If it's not, it has to be not given. Let's try it out. Number 19, both animals are primarily meat eaters. Um, the eating habits of tigers, is that important for this passage? So is it important to know what the eating habits are for this topic, for this passage? Absolutely, it's important. Yeah, thank you, Begzod. Thank you, Vivek. Yeah, definitely. So it's important, okay, for the topic. So it has to be a yes or no, right? So is it true? Do both animals mostly eat meat? Tigers? We're talking about tigers. Come on, tigers. Yes, thank you. Uh, the word Ashish says is they're carnivorous. Carnivorous is a meat eater. Okay, so important, true. Yes, so the answer therefore is yes. Okay, a meat eater is a carnivore. Uh, what is a plant eater? quickly pick up a couple of key vocabulary here. What do you call a plant eater? What do you call an animal that eats both? Like a human or a bear or a pig. Let's see. <laughs> Renat says a vegetarian. Uh, good for you, Renat. Uh, oh, my, ma says herbivore. That's right. Herbs, herbs are plants. Herbivore, okay, is a plant eater. So plant eater, herbivore. Pronounce it with me. So repeat me when I say these words, okay? Don't just stare at the screen. Repeat me, herbivore. Uh, meat eater, carnivore. And one that eats both is omnivore, okay? Omnivore. Spider Ninja, thank you. You're awesome. Thank you for the super chat. Um, so herbivore, carnivore, omnivore, okay, both meat. Omni means both. You might have heard that uh, when you're buying speakers or headphones, omnidirectional sound, okay? All right, so definitely tigers are carnivores. They're carnivorous. There's different word forms, adjective form. Carnivorous animal. So it's yes. Next one. The gestation period for females is about four years. Gestation period means how long they're pregnant. OK, 
Okay, pregnancy time. So is it important to know for the topic, talking about tigers, is it important to know how long they're pregnant? Is that important to know? So Begzot says, yeah, it's important because we're talking about the reproductive cycle. And there is information about that, right? So it's important. Is it four years? So important, yes. True, no. So therefore, no, right? That would be my answer. Okay. Sanjita says about 15 weeks, right? So, yeah, uh, again, use your logic, ladies and gentlemen. The bigger the animal, the longer the gestation period. Humans actually have one of the longest gestation periods in the animal kingdom just because of how complex we are. Uh, for how uh, long is a human uh, pregnant? Nine months, right? Uh, there is no way that a tiger will be pregnant for four years. I believe an elephant uh, and a whale are pregnant for maybe longer than humans, but no animal is pregnant for four years, as far as I know. Okay, So keep your thoughts simple. 21, young tigers need their mother for survival during the first half year. Okay, so... Young tigers need their mother for survival. Is it important to know how long the baby tigers need the cubs? How long they need their mother for survival? Yes. Is it true that they need their mothers for survival for the first half year? Is that true? Yes. So I would put yes. Okay. Uh, these questions can be tricky because I remember that they actually need them for longer, for like a year, right? But that includes the first six months for sure, so it has to be true, right? Okay, uh, killing is a rite of passage which shows a cub is ready to leave its mother. So is this information important when we're talking about Bengal and Siberian tigers, that killing is what is needed to show the mother that the cub is ready to leave home. Begzod says it's not important. Uh, some of you might say, yeah, maybe a little bit. Here, why is it not important? So Begzod, why do you think it's not important? Or Ramandeep, why do you think that's not important for this passage? What's your logic? What does your logic tell you? Why do you think that? Aigul, why do you think that it's not important and it's not given? And these not given ones are the ones that you really need to get because they can waste a lot of time. So it's very important to get the not given ones. So why do you think that's not important? Why is that obsolete? What brings you to this conclusion? Okay. Hopefully what you're thinking right now is that probably because it's too detailed, okay? It's too much detail, all right? The passage is mostly focusing on comparing the Siberian and the Bengal tiger. So talk, getting into reproductive cycle may fit, but getting into the cubs growing up and the rite of passage, when is the mother ready, it's too much Detail. Yeah, Jubilant. Good. It's too specific. Uh, it's unlikely. If we were reading for another two pages, maybe. Okay, if we had another one or two more pages of script, maybe. But not in this two-page script. It's, not, it's too much detail, right? So I would go with not given on that one. Okay. If a mother gives birth to one to four cubs, it is common for one not to live past six months. Okay? So if a mother gives birth to one to four cubs, it is common for one not to live past six months. Is that important? What do you think? 
No, again, too much detail. So I would say not given. Okay? So not given, not given. Now, if you have two not givens like that, uh, you might start to think, really, this one's not given and this one's not given? If you're running out of time, don't check. If you're running out of, if you still have a bit of time, you might want to look and see, well, maybe one of these two might be given. They would be logically here at the end, okay, where it talks about the babies, so the cubs. The females are pregnant for 15 weeks, okay, so we know it's not four years. Each of the cubs, they're dependent on their mother for the first six months, so that was good as well. They develop skills to hunt and kill after two or three years, okay, at the age of four or five, they can reach, okay, so it looks good. I'll stay with the two not givens after skim reading a little bit, okay? And that's fine. Checking one or two questions or answers is fine. Let's go to the last three questions, the fill in the blanks. Here we go. Humans are not a part of the tiger's regular what? Okay, last three questions. Hang in there, students. Hang in there. It's not a part of the tiger's regular... Well, we said diet from our logic before. I think let's stick with that, okay? Diet's good, all right? Amar Deep, good. Exod, good. Vivek, good. Yeah, diet, absolutely. Uh, it's okay to use all capitals. Just make sure your spelling is accurate. Diet's fine. Okay, while not common, the Bengal tiger will resort to, okay, we said eating for this one. I'm going to keep my answer the same, right? Jubilon says, not a part of the regular diet plan. Sure, <laughs> yeah, makes sense, Jubilant. Um, all right, and uh, attacks by Bengals are often committed in defense of the tiger's what? What's the last one? So attacks by bangles are often committed in defense of the tigers. It wasn't cubs. Lovepreet, which one? Eating for the last one with the cubs? Wasn't cubs. Careful. Wasn't cubs. Igul says feeding. Aha, MD Anwar Parvez says meal. Or food. Yeah, absolutely. Meal or food. Okay, so remember visualizing. Hopefully some of you saw that angry mama tiger when she was feeding her little cubs and another man comes along and, hey, you guys eating a hamburger there? I'd love to uh, try a bite. And the mama tiger's going, I don't think so there, Sonny Jim. Um, all right, so uh, attacks by Bengal tigers are often uh, committed in defense of the tiger's food or tiger's meal is a better answer than cubs. Okay, so careful. Logic will usually give you the right answer, but not always. Okay, uh, let's have a look at the answer key. See how we did? Page 201 in your book. For those of you that have it. Okay. And here we go with number 14. So let's check it out. Okay. So starting with number 14, B, A, 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 B. That's good for that first set, the classification question. Okay. Uh, if you're looking at a reading passage where it's comparing two uh, versions like the uh, Siberian and the Bengal tiger, there's a very good chance that you will have that classification type question, okay? Uh, the yes, no, not given. Yes, no, yes, not given. And not given. So there you go. Not Those two not givens were correct, okay? Um, 24 diet, 25 eating, 26 cubs, Ooh, I don't know. I might argue that with whoever wrote the book. I would say eating. But hey, if I got one wrong, 
it's not the end of the world, okay? I'll talk to the people who wrote the book. <laughs> wasn't me. Um, all right, Sana says, I was right, it is Cubs. Eh, it could be argued. But hey, students, if you get one wrong from 13 questions, okay, you are doing great. You are on path for an 8.5 for sure, all right? So don't panic. That is the least of your worries. Your goal is to get at least over 10, okay? You want to get at least over 10, all right? All right, students. Uh, and uh, Omaima says, easy passage. Yes, Omaima, this is a little bit easier than some, again, because it's visual, right? That was one of the important points I made this class is that when you have a visual passage, uh, like something about tigers that you can easily see, uh, it should be easier and you should start with this one, okay? So that's it for me for today, students. Again, remember these important strategies. Number one, read and interpret the title, Ask What, Why, How. When you see a picture for the uh, start of the passage, okay, make sure to visualize it, okay? It's very, very important, all right? If you cannot get the title when you read the title right away, read the first two sentences and try again, okay? Keep in mind that using good logic, you can figure out about 30% of the answers accurately, all right? Keep that in mind. Okay, students, have an awesome rest of your day. Tomorrow, we are looking at some listening. Until then, make sure to check us out on our websites, ahelp.com, gieltshelp.com. This is our academic IELTS website here. I'm in my, my student account. This is what the homepage looks like. Just uh, click that big red button and join us. For general IELTS, go to this one with the green background. Click that big red button. Join us there, gieltshelp.com. All right. Tomorrow, same time, 15 to 16 o'clock, Central European time. Hopefully, I will see you all then. Enjoy the rest of Valentine's Day. Much love to all of you and sweet dreams to those of you getting ready for bed. Bye for now.